Hello! Welcome to another episode of Stuff with Keith. I am Keith and I am back for my long break. I'm excited to be making videos for my channel again. To my subscribers, my supporters, thank you very much for still being with me. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make this. That's right, wooden tribal masks. These are very simple to make, they don't take a lot of time and they don't cost a lot as well. They make great decoration pieces, they make great costume masks or for children or for adults, you know, whatever you want to use them for. Let me show you in this video how to make your very own wooden tribal mask in the comfort of your own home. First, you'll need a wooden plank. I got this from Daiso, which only cost me $2. It looks like wood, it feels like wood, but it's pretty lightweight. I'm not pretty sure what kind of wood it is in the description, it just says wooden material. If you want it to make things easier, you get the darker wood material. I couldn't find it at the store, so I have to stain it myself later on. If you're going to choose a wooden plank, please get one that can cover your face because you're going to make it into a mask after all. So if you see... Yeah, right, can't really see me. Since I couldn't find a darker wood material, I had to stain it myself because this colour looks too clean. So while I was at Daiso, I actually managed to find this. Wood based varnish for interior woodwork. Walnut. Brushes and paint. I use, I'm going to be using acrylic paint for this wooden tribal mask. They are waterproof, they are weather resistant, so they are the best option. Try not to use poster paint because uh, with contact with water, they will come off as well. So if you're going to be using them as uh, costume pieces or masks especially, you are going to handle them a lot. So you don't want that, you don't want the paint to come off your hands and all that. So use acrylic paint. Uh, I use food container as a palette. I just use this as a, to put my paints on and I can use this as a water container to wash my brushes. So cheap, uh, free in a way and disposable so you don't have to clean up after that. I'm gonna use these masks just as decorative pieces. You can click the annotation down below to skip ahead to the creation process because the next few materials are optional and they are used to make these masks wearable instead. You'll need a power drill to drill through the plank for eye holes. Sandpaper. After drilling the eye holes, You'll need to sand down the chips and the rough parts, you know, in case they get into your eye. You wouldn't want that. Would you? you need a stapler and some rubber bands. Preferably two, or if you have the thicker ones, they'll be great as well. First, you'll need to know where the eye holes should be on the plank. A fast way to do it is to have two fingers pointing outwards and positioned to where your eyes are. Then, bring the wooden plank towards the fingers. Adjust the plank if you feel that it is not straight or centered. Keep your fingers on the plank. Grab a pencil and make rough markings above your fingers onto the plank. Use a ruler to ensure that the markings are straight and parallel to the top edge of the plank. Draw ovals at where the marks are. These are going to be the eye holes to see through. Be careful when you drill the plank. Make sure they are clamped down well and drill through them slowly. You might get wood chips and splinters jutting out like these. So, use sandpaper to sand the chips away and to smoothen the area. I used sandpaper wrapped around a bamboo chopstick to sand through the holes. Paint the wood stain over the plank. For best results, paint along the wood grain rather than across it. If you want a darker finish, wait for it to dry and paint more layers. If you drip on unpainted areas, it's best to spread them up quick before they dry or you will get drip marks. But not to worry, they can be covered up later with more layers. Once you have the planks stained, give them time to dry. Remember to stain the edges as well. I only stain one side of the planks as the other side won't normally be seen by people, whether these are used as decorations or masks. Once the wood stain has dried, you're going to use the acrylic to paint on designs on the wooden mask. But if you're worried you have no creative bone in your body at all, I'm paid! I'm a numbers guy! Don't worry because you can go on Google to find reference images to help you. For this tribal mask, I decided to do the four elements, earth, wind, water and fire. 
so I used colours that correspond to these elements. The strokes you paint will also add character. Angular lines and strokes will appear more tough, and curved, rounded strokes will appear more flowy and mild. After painting, leave them to dry, and when they are dried, they will be ready to use as decorative pieces. To make them into wearable masks, there are a few more steps to follow. Cut the rubber band so that it will become like a rubber string. I tied two of these rubber strings together so that it could fit around the size of my head. If you have other elastic bands or strings, uh, ensure that they are able to fit around the wearer's head for a snug and tight fit. Staple the ends of the rubber string to the side edges of the plank, around the same height as where the eye holes are. And they are completed. And there you have it, a very simple way to make wooden tribal masks for decorations or costume pieces. Oh yeah, by the way, a non-video version of this tutorial can be found on Instructables.com. Instructables.com is an co online community of people who submit tutorials, tips and tricks on how to create stuff. So they range from artwork, music, food, all kinds of stuff. I included the links to my tutorial down in the description below. And there's also another link just to go to Instructables.com for you to discover other tutorials by people. And that's all for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video or if this video has helped you in any way, please give that thumbs up button a click. If there are any comments or suggestions for me, uh, feel free to just leave them in the comments. I greatly appreciate feedback as well. And if you have not, you can always click this big red subscribe button right above my head to subscribe to my channel to be kept updated in videos and all that. Alright, this is Keith signing off from Stuff with Keith. Bye!